Guys, thanks for joining us for uh, today's Fiat Suns in Cars. Um, try to get some dirt on you around the club. And, uh, <laughs> Couldn't no, find anything. Nobody's giving me anything. Does that say something? I'm clean. I'm does that clean. say something about you? Or is it... <laughs> uh, no, I'm paying the boys well. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to uh, repay the favour by giving us any dirt on some of the boys? Uh, no, I don't think I'll do that. Okay. I think it'll backfire on me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've got too much. They're all, uh, they're all pretty well behaved. That's fine, mate. Uh, let's talk about the shoulder just really quickly. How did the surgery go? Was it last week in Melbourne? Yeah, last week. I was, no, I'm, I'm about 13 days post-op now. Yeah. Um, surgery went well. Uh, surgeon was really happy with, with how everything went. Um, for me now, it's just a matter of um, you know getting it out of the sling, um, you know, getting it moving again, uh, just doing a bit of light TheraVan work, and then I'll get another scan at the eight-week mark. And we'll have a look and make sure that you know the two bones, um, or the bone that they've moved, is fused um, together well, or joined together well with uh, with the other bone. And, and from there, if it has, then I can I can start um, really ramping things up in the gym. So for me at the moment, it's just a bit of a waiting game. Um, yeah, so just spending as much time around the club with the boys as I possibly can, and um, yeah, just looking forward to to getting to the eight week post-op so I can uh, I can start getting into to, uh, some training. And you're hoping to provide some uh, mentorship to the boys over the next three weeks? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, I, it's, you know, it's been been the same for me, you know, probably the last two and two and a half years. Um, you know, ever, as everyone knows of, um, you know, this is my uh, my second shoulder uh, dislocation now, second lot of surgery. So, um, you know, be plenty, spending plenty of time on the sideline. But just been super proud of the boys' effort over the last two weeks. Uh, we've been speaking about that all year, just making sure that the effort's there. Let's go back to your childhood really quickly. Um, Motawari, is that where you grew up? In... I didn't grow up in Motawari, no. Okay. I, I played football, my junior football, um, out at Mount Moriac okay. um, for Motawari. Um, I actually uh, I grew up on the coast in, in Torquay, and I had a couple of my best mates at the time that were playing football out there, and they uh, they convinced me um, to sign up sign up with uh, with Motawari, and I was there for, for three or four years of my junior football, and um, you know got plenty of great memories from those times. So what was it like growing up in Torquay? I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, always loved the coastal lifestyle. Um, you know, grew up surfing, uh, spending plenty of time down the beach. Uh, and you know my family are all still down that way um, you know great part of the world and I try and get down there as often as I can to, to catch up with family and, and catch up with you know my mates that I grew up with um, and uh, you never know I may may move back down there one day after 40. Is it true that you had aspirations to be a pro surfer back when you were younger? <laughs> I, yeah I did I did as a teen um, it was either surfing or skateboarding um, I actually stopped playing football for a year or two uh, through my teens and um, you know, spent a bit more time focusing on my surfing and skateboarding, but uh, that didn't work out for me. And uh, luckily enough, uh, the Geelong Falcons um, invited me down to train with them one pre-season and made the team and, and got drafted the year after that. Obviously, you spent a lot of time around the Geelong Football Club when you were just sort of growing up. What was that like? Uh, I've got so many great memories, um, you know, from, from my childhood around the Geelong Football Club. Um, you know, my dad, dad had a 13, 14 year career. Spent plenty of time down there with the Geelong players at the time. Um, went along to most games. Um, just you know, loved loved the the cats as a kid. Um, loved spending time at the football and um, yeah, I, I can I can still remember one time. Um, my mum took my brothers and sisters on a family holiday, and I didn't want to go if it meant uh, missing one of the Geelong games. That's how much I loved my football growing up. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, you know, still got plenty of great memories. You know, some great pictures and. and uh, you know, of, uh, of the time I spent down there with my brother and my dad and, and all the other guys. So, um, you know, something I'll never forget. There's obviously plenty of personalities around the club at the time. Do you have any memories that really stick out? Um, there's a couple. I think uh, my dad kicking his 100th goal, uh, everyone running out on the field. And I can still remember me and my brother jumping the fence and trying to get out to my dad. There would have been, you know, thousands of people on the field. Um, you know, and we're, we're, we're probably 50 metres away from him. Um, you know, trying to yell out, Dad, Dad, Dad. Um, you know, obviously he couldn't hear us with the amount of people there was on the ground. But that was that was obviously a special memory for, for both Nathan and I um, as kids, um, you know, being involved in that. Um, and just probably some of the premierships, some of the grand finals that uh, I went along to as a kid. You know, they didn't, didn't win any, but, um, you know, going along... 
um, as a kid loving the Geelong Football Club and seeing them play at Premiership was uh, was a pretty special memory. Let's talk a little bit about family. What was it like being the son of Gary Ablett? Um, to be honest with you, I found it tough at times, um, especially in my teens. Um, and that's probably part of the reason why I gave football up for a year or two, because I just wanted to kind of make my own name in in, uh, in a different sport. At the time, it was uh, it was skateboarding and, and surfing. Um, and it wasn't until I got to the age of about 16, as I mentioned before, the Geelong Falcons invited me down, and my dad really encouraged me to make the most of that opportunity and, and just said, mate, you got nothing to lose, go along, just enjoy yourself. Um, if, it, if it works out for you, it works out for you. If it doesn't, um, then he'll support me no matter what I did. And, you know, that made me made me feel a whole heap better. It, it took a lot of pressure away. Um, and it, as I mentioned also before, you know, I had a really good year that year and then got drafted. And, and then, um, yeah, part of the reason why I didn't take the number five was for that reason. I, I, you know, I wanted to make my own name in football, so I took number 29 and, and haven't looked back from there. You obviously played in a premiership with your brother Nathan. How special was that? That uh, that would go down as as one of uh, probably one of the, the best memories of my football career. Um, you know, I can re- can still remember when uh, Nathan was drafted. Um, you know, I was I was super excited because I wasn't sure if he if he really wanted to play football, and it was the same for him. You know, through his teens, um, you know, he he had some other passions that. Um, you know, he really spent time focusing on that, um, and then then was, then got drafted. And um, you know, I think if you you to ask most guys, you know, if they have the chance to play at the top level with their brother, um, you know, most guys would make the most of that opportunity. I got to play in a winning premiership with him, and um, you know, still got the pictures up at home, and, and something that uh, every time we catch up for a coffee, we're always talking about. He spends a bit of time up here these days. How close is your relationship now? Yeah, we're very close. Um, he's not not spending as much time up here as I, I'd like. He's back down in Victoria at the moment, working down there, and um, you know, just wanted to be around around family down there. But we're very close. We uh, we speak just about every day over the phone, um, and yeah, just just he's just someone that I respect so much. Um, you know, I always turn to him for advice, um, and you know, just the respect. I guess the way he goes about things. You know, his integrity and, and just the man he is. Um, you know, he's. Uh, one of my best mates. Your love for American sports well known. Um, is it true that before football you wanted to become an NBA basketballer? Um, yeah, I mean, if I uh, if I could pick one sport to be proud, it'd definitely be an NBA player. But I think I knew, you know, as a teen that, that I probably wasn't tall enough. Um, I played a lot of basketball, um, you know, through through my teens. Um, you know, I used to play for three different teams. Uh, you know, playing three games a week. Um, and I still love my basketball. You know, I still get out and, and have a shot as often as I can. But uh, you know, it's uh, the they're amazing athletes over there in the NBA, and um, I think I picked the right sport. Obviously, a massive fan of LeBron. Tell us a little bit about that. I am. Um, I just just really enjoy watching him. Um, you know, obviously, he had a lot of expectations put on him when he was first drafted. Um, you know, obviously, number one pick. Um, comparing him to Michael Jordan. And I, I just love seeing someone with those expectations placed in him be able to handle that pressure and, and have the career he's had. Um, you know, and unfortunately, you know, the, the tall poppy syndrome, you know, people at times like to like to drag people down and, and I just um, I just yeah, I just love it love love to see him succeed and, and do well and uh, he's had a fan, fantastic career to date and, and someone that I really look up to in sport. So which NBA team are you following now? Is it Cleveland or is it Miami? <laughs> uh, well, I was originally Cleveland. Um, he moved to Miami, so I jumped ship. Um, and now, now I'm back with Cleveland. A little, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some uh, things about a shoe collection you might have. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, I've been lucky enough to, uh, to have a relationship with, uh, with Nike over the last 10 years. Um, you know, really enjoyed working working with uh, the guys down there at Nike um, and they've been fantastic to me and, and that's part of the reason why I've got the shoe collection I do you know they they know how much I love my NBA basketball so they're um, you know they're sending me Jordans LeBrons um, you know all different types of shoes so I have I've got a got a collection of over 300 shoes that have never been worn um, not too sure what I'm going to do with them um, you know whenever the boys are over I, uh, I normally give a pair away um, but yeah it's uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You have to come check it out. Definitely. 
So what's the most prized shoe in that collection? Ah, uh, well, um, I'm not too sure. I've got a, I've got a couple of pairs of, of, of rare Jordans, um, so it would uh, have to be, have to be those shoes. A couple of years ago, went to the Super Bowl thanks to Gatorade. What was that like? That was a really cool experience. Um, you know, going to a Super Bowl has always been on my bucket list. So, uh, you know, I was able to tick that off. Um, but it was great. You know, Gatorade lo really looked after, um, looked after me, uh, you know, put us up. Spent, I think we spent about three or four days in New York. Um, and then, yeah, obviously got to go along to the game. And, um, you know, just I, I love watching other sports and, and, you know, the different types of training they do and, and how they go about things and finding out, you know, a little bit about the individuals and, and the professionalism and, um, you know, what they really put into their, um, you know, their training and preparation and things like that. I think you can really, really learn a lot from that. So it was great going over there and, and um, you know, talking to the people in the know that, that work with these athletes every single day. And, um, yeah, it was just a really great experience. You're renowned as a competitive person. Most people will describe you as the most competitive person they know. Is that something you'd agree with? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I am a very competitive person. I, uh, I don't like to lose, um, you know, and that's, that's the same in any sport. But I think that's part of the reason why I've been able to achieve what I have. Um, because every game that I go out, I want to win. Um, you know, and I want to get the best out of myself as a footballer. And, um, you know, I think if you look at, you know, if you look at all champions in, in different sports, I think the, um, you know, I've been, lock, I guess, lucky enough along the way to meet people like Tiger Woods and, and Roger Fitter and guys like that and have brief, brief chats with them. And um, the one thing that I've taken away from those chats is that they're, they're also super, super competitive guys in everything they do. Um, and I think you kind of need that to, to have success over a long period of time. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's something, something that, um, you know, was ingrained in me or, or it's something that, um, you know, you can, uh, I guess, kind of pick up along the way. But, uh, you know, it's something that, that I've had ever since I was a kid. Pokemon Go is a worldwide phenomenon at the moment. Never heard of it. <laughs> I've, I've seen you walking around the stadium. Are you involved in Pokemon Go? Oh, I did download the app for about a week, and, and that was uh, just after the so shoulder surgery because the uh, the only form of exercise that I could do was uh, was get out and go for a walk. Um, but yeah, look, not my thing. Um, you know, some of the boys seem to be really enjoying it, um, which is good for them. But I still don't fully understand it. Was the first question you asked when you downloaded it is how you win? It was, I was, and uh, I, the second question was, so uh, what are the most rarest um, Pokemons, um, if that's what you call them? Um, so yeah, I, I uh, yeah, very, very interesting, um, very interesting app, but um, yeah, very popular. But not for you? Not for me. So it's well known that you're on the paleo diet, can you tell us a little bit about that and what it involves and what sort of you eat day to day? Yeah, um, yeah, I do follow. I like to call it a lifestyle rather than a diet. But um, I started the the paleo lifestyle about four years ago. I had a mate at the time um, who was following it. Um, found that within his training, um, you know, there was a heap of benefits um, in terms of how quickly he was recovering, uh, inflammation of joints. Um, I was a bit skeptical at the time, but um, you know, I decided to introduce some foods and and take some certain foods out of my diet and I found that it was really working for me. Um, yeah, never never looked back since. When I was trying to get some dirt on you, one thing that I was told is that back in probably 2001, the neutral game was a big part of the diet. Is that eliminated now? The neutral grain? The neutral grain. That would have been Max Rupp. It was, yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, The well, neutral I, grain of notes? Yeah, I got told about that. I was trying to dig for uh, that was, uh, I was 17 at the time, I'd just been drafted, and a lot of people don't know this, um, I didn't have my license at the time, obviously being 17, um, so I, I would stay um, in Geelong at some of the boys' houses the night before the game, just because there was no way of me getting in there. Um, my mum was working, um, my dad was working at the time, and so the reason that I ate the neutral grain and oats is because it was because the only thing that Maxie had in his cupboard, so... <laughs> So I did dig pretty deep, mate, and that's yeah. probably the best thing I've got. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, religion and faith, obviously, a really important part of your mm. life. Tell us a little bit about that and how that sort of came about. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, it, it's it's everything to me, to be honest. I um, and I've spoken about this before. I I had an amazing experience when I was uh, was when I was 21, 22 and I was struggling with some things in my life at the time, and. Um, you know, I felt felt like God really revealed some things to me, and 
you know, never really looked back from there. And, and for me, um, you know, having a faith is, is about having a relationship with God and, um, you know, seeking Him every single day for, for answers on things and, and trying to live, you know, a, a, a Christ-like life. Um, and, um, you know, I guess trying to set a, a good example for the boys around the club as well. At, at the end of the day, you know, football is only a game. Um, there's, there's so many things in life that, that are a lot more important and, um, you know, as a, as a captain and a leader of that football club, I, you know, I want to see them do well on the football field, but I also want to, want to see them grow as people and become better people. So, um, you know, really enjoying that role. And, and as I said, um, you know, my, my faith is something that's very important to me. And do you feel that faith has given you extra purpose and direction in your life? Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, I know, you know, through my early teens, um, they were some of the, the exact questions that I was asking. Why do I exist? Why am I on earth? Um, and, you know, I didn't really have a purpose. You know, I think sometimes we can get, you know, we can get caught up, you know, chasing material things and, and trying to find purpose in the wrong things. And, um, you know, that's, that's I think that's, um, you know, a question that's been answered for me. And, um, you know, just uh, just love where I'm at in my life. And what would you say the most, like, the most significant thing you've learned about yourself would have been in the last 10 years or so? Um, identity is probably a big thing uh, that I guess not not worrying so much about what people think and, and not trying to search for approval um, from people that at the end of the day I know the person that I'm trying to become and the person that God made me to be and, and that's that's really all that matters um, and, and it's a journey there's no doubt about that you know I'm learning every day and, and as I said before you know I'm seeking God for those answers but um you know, I need to I need to stop worrying about what people think so much, and, and I know my identity lies in Christ and what He thinks of me. And um, honestly, that was a, a real turning point in my life because I think a lot of people worry about that. They search for the approval of people, and when they don't get that, then um, you know they they start to think bad things about themselves. I spent a lot of time over in PNG during recent off seasons with the Gateway Children's Fund. Is it Gateway Children's Fund? Yep. yep. Is that part of that, and what about sort of? Uh involvement had there yeah so one of my one of my best mates um dad started the, the gateway children's fund about 20 years ago um and he's been doing been doing some great work in in, in png um, mainly in port moresby and, and basically what he does over there is um he, he started preschools um for kids from um just some of the, the poorest areas of, of png they call them settlements over there um and basically he goes into those settlements gets these kids um, and just teaches them the basic skills that they'll need, teaches them all about hygiene, feeds them, and then what he'll do is he'll go to the schools on their behalf um, and say, you know, these kids have got the basic skills that they need now to be able to go along to your schools and, um, you know, something that I really wanted to be a part of. Um, I've been over the last three years and, and really enjoyed that experience. I try to take some of the younger guys over over as often as I possibly can as well, just because I think it, it's a real eye opener for them and it puts a lot of things into perspective. Um, so there's no doubt I'll continue to do that for a long time. Just one more thing, guys, just uh, post high. It's uh, one of your off-field endeavours. It's obviously uh, get, getting a bit of traction. Yeah. Talk us through that and what, what sort of uh, the concept is and uh, yeah. bringing goalposts to our kids. Such a cool idea. Um, when Jeff White, um, who who started it, um, first approached me about it, um, you know, he, he told me the reason behind it, um, and I could could really relate to that because you know I can remember as a kid, um, you know, what it was like, you know, when you wanted to kick a football and you couldn't find any goalposts if you weren't near an oval, you use whatever you could find, whether that was a bin or a swing in a park, and um, you know, Jeff said that that was the same for his kids. Um, so he, he came up with this idea and made a few phone calls and, and did some research and, and that's how you know Post High came about and I'm just so glad that uh, I can be part of it and I think it's something that kids are going to love um, and yeah we're, we're at the stage right now where we're just putting the, the, the finishing touches on the product and, and hopefully we can launch it by, um, by October, November. For those who are interested in Post High, how can they get involved and how can they purchase? Yeah, you can, uh, can jump on the, the website and pre-order. Um, I won't give you a, an exact date just because I need to, to speak to Jeff first, but uh, I'm guessing you'll be able to pre-order in the next month or two. Um, and yeah, just, just super excited. We're, we're looking forward to just getting out there and you know, there'll be plenty of giveaways. We're heading down to, to plenty of uh, footy clinics and, and kicking the footy around with the kids. Um, and yeah, so I just 
be great if people could get behind it and um, you know I think it's a really great thing and, and as I mentioned before just glad that um, you know I could be part of it. Thanks for joining us on Fiat Sons in Cars Gaz that's been an absolute pleasure and we're looking forward to seeing you back out there on the field in 2017. No problem thanks for having me guys.